Today I want to share with you 10 cheap foods to stock in your prepper pantry. Hi sweet friends, I'm Mary and welcome to Mary's Nest where I teach traditional cooking skills for making nutrient dense foods like bone broth, ferment, sourdough and more. So if you enjoy learning about those things consider subscribing to my channel and don't forget to click on the little notification bell below that'll let you know every time I upload a new video. Now, before we get started, the first thing that I want to say is don't forget to open the description underneath this video where you'll see timestamps listing everything that I'm going to cover. And the reason that I do that is because I always like to take a few minutes in the beginning of the video to speak to beginners as well as new viewers who are new to the concept of the prepper pantry. But if you're very familiar with it and you're ready to just jump right in, be sure to look at the timestamps and go jump ahead where I'm going to start listing all the items that you can buy for very affordable prices. And the second thing that I want to say is I'm really hoping that this video is going to be very helpful to a broad audience of people. And the reason is I did what so many of you suggested. You asked me not to shop at my local grocery store and instead to go to a Walmart. And that's exactly what I did. I drove into town and I went to a Walmart. So I'm hoping that the products that I share with you and the prices that I share will be relatively similar as to what you can find available to you in your Walmart. And now I just want to take a few minutes to talk to those of you who may be new to the concept of creating a prepper pantry. When I use the broad term pantry, I'm referring to the four corners pantry and the four corners are the working pantry, what you can access every day, the refrigerator, the freezer, and then the extended pantry or what we nickname the prepper pantry. Your working pantry holds your non-perishable goods, your canned goods, your box goods, things in jars, so on and so forth. And it usually has enough in there to last you a few weeks. And the refrigerator and the freezer are kind of self-explanatory. And your extended pantry or prepper pantry is generally non-perishable goods that are just stored in a different area, maybe a different closet or a cabinet, whatever the case may be, depending on how much you like to stock up with. And then when supplies begin to run low in your working pantry, you basically go shopping in your extended pantry and use the things that are in your extended pantry to restock your working pantry. And this isn't about hoarding. You stock your extended pantry little by little. And I have many videos on how to get started doing this. And I'll be sure to link to that playlist in the iCards and in the description below. And that's wonderful. That's a wonderful place to get started learning about why we need a prepper pantry, how to stock your prepper pantry with real food, not buying any processed food or prepackaged food or freeze dried food or whatever the case may be, just real food that you can buy at your grocery store. And I also have videos where I show you how to stock your prepper pantry with just an extra $5 a week added to your grocery budget. And that's how you want to do this. You want to stock your extended pantry little by little by little. You just want to add a few extra things to your grocery basket each week. Take advantage of things like sales where you can buy two or three cans or boxes or whatever the case may be of something or take advantage of coupons, so on and so forth. And little by little, you're going to find that your extended pantry now has an extra week's worth of food and then an extra two weeks of food. And how much you want in your extended or prepper pantry depends on what you think you may need. And why do you want to have this extra food? The reason is there are many reasons. There may be bad weather and you can't get to the grocery store, but the food in your working pantry is running low. You can just shop in your extended pantry. You may be sick and you can't get to the grocery store. You may be out of work and your budget is very tight. Or there may be a whole host of other things like what we've been going through for the last few years. There's many reasons why you want to be prepared to always have a little extra food on hand. Now I've heard from many of you who are just starting out creating a prepper pantry and unfortunately right now prices are rising for groceries and a lot of other things and you've asked me where you can get started 
adding to your prepper pantry with foods that are very reasonably priced. So that's what we're going to focus on. Foods that are real foods that you can make real meals with that are nutritious but are, that, but are very reasonably priced. So as I said, if you are new to this and you are a beginner and the food that you have right now in your house is very low, these foods should at least get you started if not stocking your prepper pantry, at least stocking your working pantry. And then when you have a nicely stocked working pantry, you can move on to start creating your prepper pantry. Now in this video, I'm focusing completely on non-perishable foods that I purchased at Walmart. However, in a future video, I'm going to go back to Walmart and I'm going to buy perishable foods. And they're going to be real foods that are reasonably priced that we can then use to make budget-friendly meals. Now when I say 10 items, many of these items are really more of a category. So you're really going to get a lot out of this, I think. And then at the end, I have two bonus items for you. Well, item number one are baking products. Now before I go over the prices of all these different items, the first thing that I want you to know is that whenever your budget allows and you can upsize and buy these in larger packages, it's the unit price that's going to go down and you're going to get even a better buy. But again, I wanted to start very basic and address those of you who have shared with me that your budget is very small, very limited, and you just want to get started. Well, these are good sizes to get started with. And then over time, as your budget improves, then you can start to pay attention to the unit price and buy as much as you can afford in a larger size. Now, some of you have left me comments or sent me emails and said, Mary, you always talk about nutrient-dense foods and you teach us how to make all these things, bone broth, cultured dairy, ferment, sourdough, so on and so forth. But then sometimes you will say, oh, you can buy white flour, you can buy white sugar. Why do you do that? And the reason is because I like to meet people where they are on their journey. So if they're very new, working on leaving that processed foods kitchen behind and journeying on to a, creating a traditional foods kitchen where they make most things homemade, I understand that in the beginning, if I say to you, you got to get raw milk, you got to get grass-fed beef, you got to be making bone broth, you got to be culturing your dairy, making ferments, where's your sourdough starter? Oh, for heaven's sakes, people are going to be so overwhelmed. So I like to keep things very simple and simply get people started making things homemade. And if that means making bread with some yeast, maybe using some sugar to make cookies or whatever the case may be, as opposed to buying cookies that have a lot of chemicals in them, including high fructose corn syrup, which is something we don't want in our traditional foods kitchen, I'm okay with that. And I feel as people begin to become home cooks and begin to make things homemade, it builds their confidence and then it's easier for them to journey to a true traditional foods kitchen. And then a year from now, two years from now, they're doing all of the traditional foods, all of the nutrient dense traditional foods that we often talk about and make here. Alrighty, well let's go over prices. Now this is a four pound bag of white sugar and this was $1.96. Now this I thought was an exceptionally good buy. This is a five pound uh, bag of all-purpose flour. It's unbleached, which I thought was excellent. They also did have bleached flour, but this was unbleached and this was only $1.52. You can make a lot of bread with this. $1.52, just outstanding. Now, they also had whole wheat flour that was a little more expensive, and they even had organic flour, which really surprised me. So that's something that you can look forward to purchasing in the future as you start to buy less processed foods and begin to make more things homemade, and then you can move monies around in your grocery budget that'll allow you to buy the organic flour. And they also had this five pound bag of cornmeal. And this I thought was wonderful. And this was priced at $2.44. And there's a lot that you can do with this. You can make cornbread. You can make the old fashioned Johnny cakes that I've showed you how to make. It's sort of like a cornmeal pancake in a way. And you can mix this up and use this as a topper. 
on top of a casserole, sort of like a tamale pie. There's so many things you can do with cornmeal. So I thought that was definitely something that was very affordable. And with five pounds, you can make tortillas. I mean, there's just so much you can do. Although technically it's not masa, which is generally, you know, I've learned a lot living in Texas, uh, is generally that masa is the correct uh, type of cornmeal for making tortillas. But even so, you can make a little flatbread, something similar. There's just so much that you can do with cornmeal. So keep that in mind. For $2.44, I think that there's a lot of nutrition here. And here I've got some cornstarch. This is wonderful as a thickening agent. It's wonderful as a, a breading agent uh, for making really crispy fried chicken uh, mixed with your flour. Uh, or you can do, if you like to do like tempura, cornstarch is wonderful for having, you know, having that on hand. And then also I've got baking powder here and baking soda. Now this big carton of cornstarch, which is 16 ounces, so that's one pound. This was a dollar eight. And then the baking powder, which is a wonderful rising agent for when you want to make quick breads, this was a dollar twelve. And the baking soda was a real bargain. And not just because this is also a rising agent to be used in baking, you can mix this with a little water to make a scrub to clean around the house. You can add some to your bath to soft soften your water. You can also mix this with a little vinegar for a wonderful fizzy cleaning agent. So there's a lot you can do with this. And then keep in mind, as I said, when you can, when you have a little more money and you can get a bigger, a bigger box, the price drops per ounce. So, but at 60 cents, you can't go wrong with this. And this is also one pound. And now what I've got here is the instant yeast, and I also have the active dry yeast. Uh, they're relatively similar, you know, obviously both used for, as rising agents. Uh, instant yeast, as the name implies, instant. It uh, can generally just mi be mixed right with your flour. You don't need to proof it. Uh, things rise a little quicker. Overall, you have the choice between the instant or the active. Certain people enjoy baking with one over the other. And sometimes recipes will call for one over the other for various reasons. But the bottom line is, these were only 77 cents each. And each one is, you know, there's three packages here. And if you do some like no need breads that you leave to rise overnight, which we'll talk more about uh, in the future, in future videos as I expand on my bread baking series that I'm doing this year, uh, you might not even need this whole package. You can just, you'll just need a quarter of a teaspoon and each package has about two and a quarter teaspoons in it uh, for the active dry yeast. The, um, the instant yeast is a little smaller, so sometimes there's a little less, but you also use a little less. But seal it right up, keep these in your freezer, they'll last long past the expiration date. Now I also want to mention that they did have sea salt, but they were out of it. So I, but I did want to alert you to it that as opposed to just buying the regular iodized salt, if you want to buy sea salt that generally has no added anti-caking agents and various other chemicals that can interfere with the fermentation process if you're going to use them to make ferments. Now their smallest package of sea salt, it was a fine sea salt, and it was priced at 98 cents for 4.4 ounces. But if you can upsize, the unit price drops dramatically and you can get a lot more sea salt for just about a dollar more added on to that 98 cents. So keep that in mind. Now, last but not least in this category one, I wanted to talk to you about molasses. Now, this is a little more costly. This is 12 fluid ounces, and the price was $3.24. However, this has 24 servings in it. And again, if you buy a bigger bottle, you're gonna get a better buy. Now, I know $3.24 is a little more pricey than some of the other things that we talked about, but Molasses is loaded with nutrition. And if you're not able to find brown sugar or you, don't, or you can't afford to buy brown sugar right now, you can take the white sugar, you can add some molasses to it. And I have a video where I show you how to do this to make light brown sugar, dark brown sugar, and even something that's somewhat similar to sucanat, which is the dried sugar cane juice, which can be a little costly. 
But this can be used in so many ways because this has a sweet flavor to it and you can add a little bit of this, especially if the, the flavor of molasses is new to you, you can use this uh, to improve the level of quality of various baked goods, especially sweet baked goods where maybe you're using white sugar. By adding the molasses, you're improving the nutritional profile. And this just has a whole host of nutrients in it. It's rich in calcium, it's rich in magnesium, in iron, and just a whole host of things. And, and all of that richness is in one tablespoon. So the fact that it's rich in iron is a real plus, especially if your groceries right now are low on protein and you can't really afford to buy maybe a lot of red meat or chicken and you're not getting a lot of protein in your diet, you can add this because it's rich in iron. Protein is rich in iron. And children often need a lot of iron in their diet. So by introducing a little molasses and getting them used to the flavor, you know, it's a little stronger, say, than honey, but when you disguise it maybe in some nice cookies or other baked goods like pumpernickel bread, they'll be getting the iron and they'll be getting used to the flavor over time. My mother used to mix this, about a tablespoon of it in milk when I was little, because she was always worried that maybe I wasn't getting enough iron. And so I really feel that this is a good investment $3.24, you're getting 24 servings, and it's loaded with nutrition. Now, item number two, which is another category, are condiments. Now, yes, as you become more experienced and you want to make more fermented foods, I show you how to make homemade fermented ketchup, and I show you how to make homemade fermented mustard. However, if you're just getting started, but you want to have products in your home that are more natural and do have less chemicals than a lot of things that you're going to see at the grocery store, having just a simple mustard and a simple ketchup are an excellent thing to add to your pantry. And getting these at Walmart, they're very reasonably priced. This large container of mustard, which is 20 ounces, was just $1. This ketchup, which is actually organic, which I was very impressed with, was only $1.88. Now they did have a non-organic ketchup that was less, but the nice thing about the organic ketchup is that when they do sweeten it, they use sugar instead of high fructose corn syrup. So I think for $1.88, this is also 20 ounces, and I think that's a pretty good buy. Now in the condiments list here, I've included uh, Rotel. And these are basically chopped tomatoes. If you're not familiar with it, they're chopped tomatoes uh, mixed with chilies. And it's very tasty. You can get original, you can get hot. There are different varieties. But this was only 98 cents. And in here you're getting 10 ounces. But this is a wonderful seasoning element. You can use this to make things like queso. You can use this uh, to add to a soup, to add a nice kick to it. And you could put this over chicken as a topping. So there's a lot you can do with this. Now in the condiments, I've also included olive oil. Now you're going to need some type of fat. And when it comes to something that's non-perishable, but that's nutritious and affordable, olive oil really fits the bill. Now this was $3.94, but this is a very good buy. It's extra virgin olive oil, and you're getting 17 fluid ounces. So if you use one tablespoon at a time, that's giving you 33 servings. So you can use this to bake with, and you can use this to make salad dressings. And if you have an egg, I show you how to use olive oil to make a one minute mayo. Now you can certainly use other oils in conjunction with the olive oil, like coconut oil and sesame oil. However, those are a little more costly. Per ounce, this was really a good buy, so I couldn't pass this up. And so I highly recommend that if you need to add a fat, into your shopping cart, but you need one that's budget friendly, this is gonna be the way to go. And this vinegar, which is white vinegar, is one gallon. And this was priced at $2.67. You can't go wrong with that. Now, you can certainly make your own vinegar. White vinegar is hard to make, 
but you can certainly make your own apple cider vinegar or various scrap vinegar with other fruits. And apple cider vinegar is something that at Walmart even was a little more expensive than the white vinegar. And since we can make that homemade with apple scraps, and I show you how I made a whole three-part series on how to make apple cider vinegar that covers the whole process. It takes about 30 days, but it's very easy to do. And there's really no work on your part other than giving it a stir every day. But I wanted to get this white vinegar and show you the price that at $2.67 for a gallon, it's relatively reasonable because if you're not really at the point where you're fermenting or even if you're fermenting and you just want to change a pace, white vinegar is often called for in pickling recipes. And it can often be called for in canning recipes. If you're, if you're learning how to can, this is definitely something that you'll want to keep on hand. And then along with your baking soda, it can work beautifully as a cleaning product. And so this is a wonderful thing to have on hand and very reasonably priced. Now item number three is another category and it's canned fruits and vegetables. But before we go over the prices of these things, I wanted to just mention to you something about the mustard that I didn't share with you earlier. I just thought this was such a good buy and it's so natural. All that's in here is vinegar, water, mustard seeds, salt, turmeric, and paprika. And the wonderful thing about mustard is that turmeric is a spice that's very high in anti-inflammatory properties. So using mustard, if you use it every day, it's wonderful to help with any aches and pains you have. Now the canned goods at Walmart are really a bargain. Everything here ranged in price anywhere from 46 cents to one dollar. Nothing here is over a dollar. These smaller cans here were 46 cents and this can has eight and a half ounces in it. The, the can of mushrooms is a little smaller and that's four ounces. Mushrooms always seem a little more expensive than other things. But for eight and a half ounces at 46 cents, you can upgrade and for a dollar, you can buy the family size of corn and this is 29 ounces. So I thought that was a really good buy for just a dollar. And if you can add a little extra money to your grocery budget as opposed to buying the smaller can for 46 cents. And something that I thought was very interesting, Walmart has a lot of interesting foods that we don't have at our grocery store. And these I thought looked so good. And again, a dollar or less. These are seasoned field peas and snaps, the snap green beans. And this one is seasoned cabbage. And then this one is squash with Vidalia onions. I think this is gonna be delicious. Now certainly if you can get these vegetables fresh and you can make all of this homemade, it's going to be less expensive, definitely. But it's nice to always have, as we've talked about in previous Prepper Pantry videos, it's always nice to have a number of canned items to get you through times when you may not have an active garden uh, or sometimes the weather like we had in Texas that destroyed our whole, our whole garden even though we can garden pretty much all year long here. When we had those terrible storms back in February of last year, everything was gone. So having things that are canned or home canned even better uh, are wonderful to have in your working pantry as well as your extended pantry. They also had various brands of the tiny field peas with snap green beans. I can't wait to try that. I think it's going to be interesting. And this was a name brand, Libby's, and this, these were sliced beets, again, a dollar or less. And these were gr cut green beans. These are actually really delicious. And on the uh, packaging, they say, picked and packed the same day. So they've got to be fresh. And for those of you who have often mentioned to me that you can't have salt in your diet, they have various options of salt or no salt added. So I picked the no salt added to show you that yes, you can get a lot of canned foods without any salt added to them. And they also have fruit in the can for a dollar or less and they have a wide variety of, of canned fruit. This was chunky mixed fruit, and I liked this because this is packed in 100% juice. It's not packed in the syrup because unfortunately, sometimes those syrups, again, like other things, are high fructose, high fructose corn syrup. And regardless, even if it was sugar, I would rather just have canned fruit that's packed in water or in its own juice. Now, 
also like the no salt added, a number of you have shared with me uh, that you can't have sugar, so this might be an option if, that, if fruit's allowed in your diet, but that you do like something a little sweet, a little more sweet than what just the natural fruit, fruit has to offer. And this I thought was fantastic. Walmart also has uh, various types of fruit. This, I got the sliced pears with no sugar added, but it is sweet because they use sucralose. And some of you have told me, you use, you've asked me, you know, uh, do I know of anything that's sweetened with sucralose and whatnot, because that's acceptable in your particular diet. And so I thought that was very clever. So you can pick a variety of these things from 46 cents to a dollar, and this can definitely help you to start stocking your working pantry or your extended or prepper pantry. Item number four is powdered milk. Now, I know there are a number of you who are gonna yell at me in the comments, but like I said, I like to meet people where they are on their journey, and sometimes being able to find raw milk is not an option. And also, as I said, we're gonna focus on, in this video, on non-perishable foods. In the future video, I'll show you the prices of what they charge for pasteurized and ultra-pasteurized milk. Now certainly, if you want to keep dry milk on hand, and you can find dry milk that's made from whole milk, that's made uh, from milk that's been low temp dried, and all these wonderful things, maybe even from cows that have been raised on pasture, and so on and so forth, that's great. And I've talked about that in previous videos. However, if you're just starting out and you're on a tight budget, and you wanna make sure that you have the availability to make some milk in the event of bad weather or illness, or where your budget's just so darn tight, maybe because of job loss, that you can't even really get to this to go to the store uh, to buy fresh milk. Having something like this on hand can be very helpful. You can reconstitute this and then you can use this to make yogurt. So you're putting, you're culturing it, and you're putting nutrition back into the powdered milk. There are three packages in here, and you're going to be able to make three quarts of milk. And if you use this to make yogurt, you can eat the yogurt as is, you can mix it with cereal, whatever the case may be, or you can strain it and you'll have whey. And that's a very nutritious liquid that's been cultured. So again, you're putting nutrition back in all of this. And then when you strain out the whey, you have something that's often called yogurt cheese. And that can be very tasty and spread on crackers. And this is high in protein. One cup, once it's been reconstituted, has eight grams of protein. And this was priced at $2.98. And that's going to give you three quarts of milk. Item number five is old-fashioned rolled oats. Now this is 42 ounces, which is two pounds, 10 ounces, and this was only $2.46. Now when you buy this, you wanna make sure that you get the old-fashioned rolled oats and not the instant rolled oats. The old-fashioned rolled oats are less processed and more nutritious, and they're less expensive. Now this entire container has 30 servings. So that's a wonderful buy for $2.46. And there's so much that you can do with this. Now, you can bake with it, but I didn't include it in the bake uh, category, the first category that we did, the baking category, because this can also be a cereal. Oatmeal is very nutritious and it's high in fiber, and it can be very comforting on a cold morning to enjoy a hot bowl of oatmeal. And for baking, it's just invaluable. I think everybody loves a nice oatmeal cookie. And I also show you how to use oatmeal to make what I call a pantry oatmeal bread. And basically you're just using everything that's in your working pantry or your extended pantry to make the most delicious oatmeal bread. And I'll be sure to link to that in the iCards or in the description below. And if you like oatmeal cookies, you're definitely gonna like cowboy cookies. Some of you know them as kitchen sink cookies. And I show you how to make those and they contain oatmeal. So another wonderful way to incorporate oatmeal into your diet. Now item number six is actually a category and it's pasta. Now Walmart has an excellent selection of pasta and it's high quality. It's made with semolina flour, it's from the Durham wheat and it's very nutritious. So there's really no reason 
to not purchase your pasta there. I was very impressed. And all of their pastas, whatever you pick, this is angel hair, and it's one pound, fettuccine, linguine, and this one over here is rigatoni, also one pound. They were all 82 cents, 82 cents. This is a terrific buy. Now I wanted to share this with you. I don't know, depending on where you live, I don't know if this will be at your local Walmart. Being that we are in Texas, we have a lot of foods from Mexico, and this is actually Mexico's number one pasta. And I wanted to share this with you because this was only 33 cents. And you could mix this up with some tuna fish, make a lovely tuna fish casserole. There's just a lot you could do with that. You can make homemade mac and cheese. Uh, so there's so much that you can do with uh, the, all of these pastas, which we'll talk more about in a minute when I show you some of the other items. So definitely consider adding this to your grocery, uh, your grocery cart when you go to Walmart because it seems to be very good quality and it's extremely well priced. Item number seven, another category, peanut butter and jelly. Now peanut butter, you can never go wrong with this if this is something that you can have in your diet and that your family can eat. Peanut butter is a wonderful source of protein and I was so impressed that at Walmart they had organic peanut butter that basically has nothing in it but dry roasted peanuts and sea salt. And they had both crunchy, which I love, and the smooth peanut butter. And this came in at $3.92. So like the molasses, this is a little more expensive. However, this is something that's very nutritious. And a serving size is two tablespoons, and you'll get a total of 14 servings. But it's very rich in protein eight grams of protein, similar uh, to the milk. It also has carbohydrates and it's very high in good fats. The good fats, that, that's what people often refer to them. You know, I consider lard and tallow and those things good fats, but people consider, you know, the peanut oil uh, being a good fat. And so that uh, is wonderful to know that all you've gotten here are the peanuts and the salt. So you've got fat, carbohydrates, and protein. It covers everything. And I was very impressed with both of these jams. This is a grape jelly, and it has no high fructose corn syrup. It's made by Welch's, and this is the Walmart brand, the great value, and this is a raspberry jam, and this says made with real sugar. And it's great. It has raspberries, which is wonderful. You always want to look for jams or jellies when they put the fruit first. This just has raspberry sugar, citric acid, and pectin. Pectin, normal things, you know, that go into making a jam. And this came in, the price for this was $2.98. And the same was true for this one, $2.98. Now, this, as I said, was raspberry. They also have this in other flavors. And actually, some of the other flavors are less expensive, but they were sold out. I think it's very popular. And the strawberry was $2.47. You really can't go wrong with that. And this has 26 servings if, if you use one tablespoon. So there's a, a, a lot that you can get out of that. And then the same here. Just like this raspberry jam, the, the jelly lists Concord grapes first. Item number eight, another category, protein. Now first let's talk about the protein on this side. This is chicken. There are two cans here and each can is 12 and a half ounces and it's packed in water and it's nice chunk chicken breast. Now this does lean a little more expensive because you're buying the two cans together and it's a total of $4.64, which brings each can down to $2.30, it would be 32 cents <laughs> and, ch and change, I should say. Uh, so that's a good buy because you can really stretch a meal with this. And if you have some chicken bone broth on hand, bone broth is a protein, what's known as a protein sparer. So if you make a soup, that you have where you're using bone broth and you add this chicken in, you can really have very little actual chicken in each person's bowl. And the bone broth that you've used to make the soup 
helps people extract as much protein as possible from the chicken that is in their soup. So when times are tight, having bone broth on hand and serving it with whatever other protein you have can really help extend, and, uh, extend your protein and allow you to absorb more nutrition. Now you know I love sardines. This is a lovely little can of sardines. It's three and three quarter ounces. They're packed in water, which is very nice. Now I know if you've never had sardines, you're going, oh, I don't know. But if you have had sardines, you know you like them. But what I recommend is buy one can and use the recipe that I share uh, here on YouTube and the printable recipes over on my website. I'll be sure, as I said, all of these things I mentioned where I have recipes or videos, I'll link to all of this so that uh, you can research it and find out what you want to make. Uh, but I have a wonderful recipe for sardines and I tell people just try it once and so many of you have come back to me and said wow I really liked it. <laughs> so I was surprised and happy. Uh, the next thing that I wanted to show you was tuna fish. Now this is just a small can. This is a five ounce can and but it's packed in water and this even has less sodium which is nice and this was 97 cents but this with some pasta and you make a little um, uh, tuna, like tuna noodle casserole, or you make some uh, tuna salad or something like that. And again, maybe you've got, you've had the carcass of a fish, uh, which can of often get very reasonable from the fishmonger at the grocery store. And you may serve it with a little soup on the side, maybe like a nice little fish broth based soup. Again, using that bone broth as a protein sparer. You can really get a lot of nutrition out of this one small can of tuna fish. And when it comes to buying tuna fish, I don't buy a lot. We always have to be a little careful about the mercury, but it is, very, it is a very affordable food and it is high in protein. And I always like to get the chunk light because it's uh, my belief from what I've researched is that the chunk light has less mercury in it than uh, the albacore. Next, I wanna talk about beans. Yes, can you buy dried beans? They're very reasonable. And that's always a good thing to stock up on. You can probably get a pound at Walmart. I think it was about a dollar. Uh, and the larger the bag you bought, the better the price you got. But I know many of you have said, oh, I don't know if I'm gonna be getting into soaking and all that, you know, what are the price of canned beans? Now, something like this, these pork and beans with the great value, they were only 56 cents. The refried beans, which are traditional refried beans, they're actually made with lard, which I was so happy to see. These were 88 cents. The ranch beans that are always delicious, these were 98 cents. Now, you know, and that's a name brand, this particular, uh, these ranch style beans. So they're a little more expensive, but they're very good. And as I said, 98 cents. And then we've got some black beans here. And these came in also at 94 cents. But again, wonderfully nutritious, high in fiber, and a good source of protein. And then they had at Walmart these Wolf brand chilies. They have the type with no beans, that's all meat. And then they had the type with beans. And these, if you've never had them, they're very tasty. And you really can make a meal with these. And these were each $2. So they are a little more pricey, but you have to keep in mind, there's a lot of meat in each of these. And last but not least, these are canned lentils. So you can make a real fast soup with these. You can toss them in a salad. There's a lot you can do with it. And they were 98 cents. And this is a 15 ounce can. Now, what I wanna show you in comparison, here is a bag of lentils. And this is one pound. And this was only 40 cents. And lentils are very nutritious. And the reason you might like to stock dry lentils it's because lentils cook up in no time. It's not like trying to cook dried beans. You don't need to soak and sprout and get into all of that if you don't want to. You certainly can soak and sprout lentils and that is definitely gonna help increase their digestion and what you're able to absorb from them nutritionally. But generally that's something that becomes more of a concern the older you get because the older you get it, is, it does become more difficult to digest certain foods and to also extract nutrients from them. Now I always recommend it with beans at least soaking them uh, before cooking them 
But lentils, you can just put these in a pot with some water and they can be ready in no time. 40 cents for a pound of lentils. Now, item number nine is rice, and this is a category two. Now, before I mention the prices of these, I want to tell you that I have a lot of videos with printable recipes where I show you how to use all these different pantry foods to make meals and to make baked goods. And I talk about uh, using jam that you can add a little water to and warm and use in place of maple syrup on pancakes or waffles. And you can use your all-purpose flour to make your pancakes and make your waffles and so on and so forth and a whole host of other recipes so be sure to look at the links in the description I'll also put them in the pinned comment because I know for some of you that's easier to find so you're not going to be left just buying these things and not knowing what to do with them I have a lot of pantry meals that's going to make your life very easy Alrighty, now what I have here is a five pound bag of brown rice and a five pound bag of white rice. Now, these bags can come as small or as large as you want. And I decided to go with the five pounds. And the reason is the price. Now the brown rice is a little more expensive than the white rice, but the brown rice is also a little more nutritious. However, the white rice uh, has a longer shelf life. So this can be used for different purposes. And you can also grind up white rice in your blender. Uh, if you have one of those high-speed blenders, I'm not sure about the regular ones, but you can certainly check with the manufacturer. And you can make a rice flour, which is another flour that's wonderful, especially if you're looking for something that's gluten-free. So this was $3.32 for five pounds of brown rice, and this was $2.48 for five pounds of white rice. And rice and beans, you hear that a lot, but there's so much more that you can do with rice. It makes wonderful side dishes. It's wonderful cooked in bone broth. And you have to remember, you can make chicken bone broth once you roast, if you have a chicken and you roast a chicken, and I tell you, buy any chicken you can afford, and then you have all the bones and scraps, you can make a magnificent bone broth, and a lot of it for literally pennies. And then if you cook your rice using the bone broth instead of water, you're increasing the nutrition. You can make things like fried rice, you can make rice pudding, you can make a porridge using rice and serve it as a breakfast food. So there's a lot that you can do with rice and at these prices, definitely worth adding to your shopping cart, especially when your budget is tight. Item number 10, canned tomatoes. You cannot go wrong with these. This is a 28 ounce can of tomatoes and it says field to can in five hours. You can't beat that freshness. Now, this can be used for so many things. You can whirl this in a blender and make your own homemade tomato sauce. You can chop this up and add it into soups. You can also chop it up with some fresh herbs maybe that you've grown in your garden or even some dried herbs that you have and use it as a topping on top of sliced chicken. There's just a lot that you can do with canned tomatoes. And as I said, at 98 cents, you can't go wrong. This is a good bargain. Now, if you grow your own tomatoes or if you're able to buy fresh tomatoes in bulk from your farmer's market, that's definitely something to think about. And if you're new to home canning, I have a video where I walk you through step by step by step how to can tomatoes. And it's very easy to do, and you can water bath can tomatoes. So that's definitely something to think about. Now these are two bonus items that I wanted to share with you. One is unflavored gelatin. This has four packages of gelatin and it was only 98 cents. And this is such a great thing to have on hand because you can make your own jello. You can use your own fruit, your own fruit juices, and you don't have to worry about the various chemicals that, and a lot of artificial colors and ingredients that are in the, the store-bought box gelatins or jellos. But gelatin can be used for a lot more than just making homemade jello. You can use this to make all kinds of pies, to give them a little thicker consistency, especially if you like to make cream-based or milk-based pies, 
or cheesecakes and things like that that are sort of the no-bake cheesecakes. So there's a lot you can do with gelatin and for four packs for 98 cents you can't go wrong. Next what I want to share with you, this is kind of a treat and this is what my mom uh, would buy when I was growing up. This was basically the only store-bought cookie that we had in our house. Now yes, can you make graham crackers? Definitely. They're a little more work. One day I'll make them and I'll show you how to make them homemade. But if you just want to have a little treat on hand for yourself or if you have young children, these are, were my son's favorite when he was a little boy and they're still his favorite as a grown man. But what I like about these is that they're made with sugar, not high fructose corn syrup. And these were only $1.53 and you get almost a pound, 14.4 ounces. So definitely for two bonus items, one that can help you make some homemade jello and some other things, and one just as a little sweet treat that you might need every once in a while. Now, if you want more information about the Prepper Pantry, why we need one, how to stock one with real food, how to do it on a budget in addition to what we talked about here today, and how to do it with just real food you can buy at your grocery store, be sure to click on this video over here where I have a whole playlist how to store things, how to use these foods to make meals, all kinds of good information. And I'll see you over there in my Texas Hill Country kitchen. Love and God bless.